Uh, so this, this is a DevOps challenge. Uh, it's only been two events since we've been doing DevOps uh, challenges. I think they're super cool and they're a part of security that is not so explored just yet. Uh, we're starting to see people getting into this and uh, like people like Carlos doing uh, like cheat seats in a, like the one in Hack Tricks. You have a section on CICD. Yeah. That's super cool to see. A couple months ago, there was like zero research on this. So it's really nice. Uh, in this case, we're giving a, a prompt here that says that someone leaked their Git credentials and their username is, I'm going to start this, just in, so it's ready after we read this. Uh, their username is de developer and here's the password. Uh, it also tells us that this challenge uses uh, virtual hosts, so we need to append some things to the challenge uh, link here. And the aim of this is to get into the company. Like there, there isn't anything else specified here. Also tells us that this might take a little bit to spin up. This is because the challenge, in order for it to be per user, I need to create a dependency during runtime, upload it to a private repository for each person that clicks on the bottom. So there's a bit of setup and it takes a little bit. Uh, hopefully it's already there. So let's open this. It will bring us to Gitea directly, which is like a open source version of GitHub. Just going to append the git dot and then going to grab the password. Mm -hmm. Just, just uh, a, a quick thanks. question, Ignacio. People can still uh, log in in the Nahamcon CTF and try the CTS, right? Yep. Cool. Uh, it's going to be available for about a week, I believe. Okay. Okay. Pretty awesome. I didn't copy it. I'm also switching constantly between Mac and Windows, <laughs> and I keep hitting the wrong uh, key keys and shortcuts. Cool. So we're in Git in Gitea, which as I said, it's like GitHub, and there seems to be another user called Cognator. Uh, we're logged in as the developer, and the developer is not a site administrator or anything, uh, as we can see here. So basically, the only thing we have access to is this uh, repository. I can already tell that all the automation uh, on the background has finished and everything has been created, so we can get started into this. So from this first file, uh, we can tell that we're using drone CI. Uh, it's also explained here. We need to go to drone. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to duplicate this tab and visit drone.challenge.mahamcom.com. Sign into this. This is set up with uh, OAuth, which is also tricky to do when you change the port all the time <laughs> for each user. For some reason, when you do OAuth with Gitea and Drone, after the login flow, it, it takes you to register. But if you just get rid of that, then you're fine. OK. That's super weird. And here is our our runs for this pipeline. Uh, we can see the last one failed four days ago. So that's from me testing. Uh, that's not doing this uh, demo. And in the description of the repository, we can see that the CI/CD pipeline runs every three minutes, and it's supposed to be to test the internal maths package. Mm -hmm. So we can take a, a look at the actual Python file. We can see there's an import for a very weirdly named Python package. Mm -hmm. This is what I mean. Every every time that you spin up the the challenge, you will get a different hash here at the end. It's not a full hash. It's like the first 16 digits of a hash or something like that. And then there's just like some unit tests of a stupid Python calculator uh, package that I built. Um, we have we haven't solved it yet, but would you say that it is this was more complicated to create than to solve this Ooh, CTF? Definitely, all of these uh, CI/CD challenges have always been way more complex to create than the actual solution. Yeah, man, I can, uh, I can see that. That's why I prefer doing CTF development rather than solving just playing CTF. <laughs> this is way more interesting. Getting to, to run, in some cases, I've I've had running, well, in this case, we have Gitea, Drone, a Drone Executor, 
like the the thing that actually runs the pipelines, the pip server, all running within the same pod in Kubernetes. Okay. And everything needs to take the the port number and the name of the dependency dynamically uh, during creation of the pod. Okay. So there's a lot of hacky things inside, like substitutions in a SQLite database, just with like text substitution. Yeah. Um, so and I guess there was there is even people that complain that hey, this is taking too long to spin up and it's not working. It's to like, be fair, <laughs> this time around, no? I had zero DMs saying this challenge isn't working. Uh, in the past, I have had them. Uh, we do have a note saying that it it will take like a bit extra, please allow three minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. This should take around one and a half minute to spin up. So people were pretty patient with that. Okay. There weren't too many complaints. So drone.jaml, this is the file where you specify the pipeline steps for a drone CI uh, pipeline. In this case, we're doing an exec, which means that this is getting run either by a container or a machine, but it, it's not Docker uh, Docker prepared. Like you could have this be Docker and it would spin up a container for each run of the pipeline. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're doing. We have a, a long living uh, container that runs all the pipelines. Okay. We can see it's Linux and here are the steps. We only have one and it's doing a couple of commands, uh, preparing the virtual environment activating it, and then doing a pip install. Here is where the actual vulnerability is. Up until now, everything's been fine. The vulnerability lies here in the extra URL. If this didn't have extra, if it was just index URL, this would not be vulnerable. Uh, what the extra means is that on top of being able to pull from the pp default repository, mm -hmm. the public one, you also have this other private repository, okay. which is hosted in internally. Like people don't have access to this uh, through the challenge directly, and it's setting it to be trusted, so we don't have to have HTTPS, just to make it simpler. And then it's running uh, main.py, which was that test that we saw before. This last bit is really important. This is what makes the challenge not the same as all the CI/CD challenges that I've seen in the past, uh, where you're just, the, the objective is just to change the steps and get a reversal through changing the steps here. In this case, with the signature, drone will actually, this is an HMAC, and it gets computed uh, with the contents of this file and a secret that is only available to the admin in drone. Uh -huh. So it's not possible for someone that is not the administrator to change the steps. Wow. Okay, 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 okay. So, so the main problem here, um, apart of that you cannot modify this drone JAML file, is that because you have the extra, um, if you if you upload the same dependency with a higher version to the pip repository, it is going to be accessing that. But if you wouldn't have put the, the extra, it will only access the local host repository for this for this dependency, right? Yeah, if it was a uh, only index URL instead of extra index URL, mm -hmm. uh, it wouldn't uh, try to get dependencies from the public one. Awesome. Uh, we can check the, there, there's another mitigation that could be in place. So in the requirements.txt file, which is what's getting installed here, if we go into that one, we can see there's no, it, it, the version is not specified here. Mm -hmm. If there was like a equals equals version 1.0.0.1, and that was the version that is in the private one. Even if it was in the public one, I'm pretty sure it will install the one from the private one. Okay. Okay. okay so okay. Uh, now, how do we solve this? Uh, I'm going to cheat and take a look at my notes because I'm really bad. <laughs> Let me move this out of the way. Your your notes were also available for the CTF players. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is my my solve. Like I, I made a little subscript because yeah. it, this has a couple of steps. Uh, and when I test, as, uh, like someone tells me this isn't working, I want to be able to test it like right away, without having to figure out how to do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I saw a couple of people asking me for my web channel, like, "Hey man, can you do a sanity check 
Um, so I guess that's why you create these, these scripts, just to run them and say, hey, it's working properly. Yeah. So here, this is my solve uh, folder. I have a little script and another package. So the idea is that the player needs to create a package in Python. There's plenty of documentation on how to create a, a, a PP, is that's PYPI uh, package. You need a folder and then you need this setup.config. This is where you're going to specify the uh, name of the package, which here you can see can I you, just have like- can you, zoom, can you zoom a little bit? Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, there is. Zoom in. I, I don't know the shortcut for this. Um, so I'm just going to do it manually. Yeah, that works. That works. Maybe a little bit more just in case. One more? Uh, I don't know. Victor, can you can you see that? Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess you can see that now. Zoom is really screwing up with my window yeah. it won't let me pop up the don't, the menu don't worry don't worry he, okay he said he can read that cool so as you can see we have calculator abc this is not the name of our uh, dependency this is just a placeholder uh, we will need to change this mm -hmm. but that's done by my script so i'm not gonna bother with that uh, version is v2 we could put like 999 or something like that but I know the other one is using 001, so this should work. Uh, email author and all of that, uh, not really relevant. And the where is the important part. That's source. One second. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, I'm dying here. <laughs> <laughs> This one is also default, not very important. And inside here is the important part. You, you okay, man? Yeah, I've had a, a bit of a sore throat for a bit oh. uh, this week. So inside calculator, this uh, will get changed. Uh, we can see there's already one that has been changed here. Okay. This will be changed and it will get like appended the, the dependency name that we have. In it should be empty and calculator.py is where the actual functions are. Uh, we could change any of the functions. This is just, I copied and pasted the actual package that I had before. Uh, you could only have one of them, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and uh, I'm creating a Python yeah. uh, reversal. I guess you could see these functions in the um, in the repo where you test the the um, the library. I guess you could get those function names. Yeah, those are here. Oh, okay, okay, awesome. Um, yeah, that that part is not very guessy. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's take a look at my solve script, and what this does is it just moves into the calculator uh, directory, and then changes the name of this other, uh, the source one, the one inside source, just appending the first argument that we give to it, which will be the this part. I'm just going to copy it for now. <laughs> and then we're also substituting that into setup.cfg, uh, so that would change this. And finally, we're building it uh, using the Python build tool. Mm -hmm. And then here you have credentials for my test. Uh, <laughs> if you want to use it, you're, you're welcome to use it. It's a, a burner account uh, of a pip.org, I believe is the, the URL uh, repository. And then we're just uploading it there. Thank you for sharing your 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 credentials. Yeah, that that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Famous last words. <laughs> professional streamer here, doxing myself. <laughs> so let me get into that directory.
but we should be there. Yep. So if I do dot slash solve, and then I paste, that's the password for the developer account, I then copy this. So this should do everything, uh, hopefully. So now it's building the the actual package, mm -hmm. and now it's uploading it, and it's been successfully uploaded. So as we saw before in the repo readme, this gets run every three minutes. We should see a couple of runs uh, from the time that we've been talking about, uh, about the challenge. Also, all of these ones should have the default, uh, like P1. Mm -hmm. In here, let me zoom. Uh, so it was installing v1 and it was just running pip dot main uh, uh, main dot pi and it was working fine so this one was 30 seconds ago so it's probably not going to be pulling the correct one oh no yeah you did we, we were so lucky with the timing okay. because we would have had to wait for three more minutes oh <laughs> <laughs> it, it would have been good if i had set up my listener to actually listen for the reversal. Yeah. That would have helped a bit. Uh, <laughs> so let's do that now. Well, I'm just going to log into my VPS and set up a netcat listener. Cool. Uh, okay. Just so we don't wait forever, I'm going to grab the, the admin account for drone, the password. Mm -hmm. So that way we can do it. Uh, we can manually trigger the pipeline. Okay. Um, this time you are not showing the password. Would you like to? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I normally reuse this template. <laughs> yeah, it's so I'm idea. gonna try not to. The famous words. Uh, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that long. <laughs> no, it's like super short. Uh, randomly created and all of that. So log out. And now if I try to log in again and get rid of the stupid register. Cool. Uh, we should be the admin. And now we have the ability to build. So normally what we were seeing before is uh, here you can set up this differently. In other challenges, this is different. So a uh, pull request will trigger this pipeline. In this one, they don't. Mm -hmm. Same with forks. And this is where we've set that signature thing mm -hmm. uh, to protect it. And the thing that we was triggering this before is this uh, Chrome job. Okay. Every three minutes, it will trigger the test. Uh, so right now, just so we don't wait, we're going to trigger the, the same build. And hopefully my listener is still there. And at some point here, uh, we should get a, uh, a show. Chan, 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 chan. Yeah, put some <laughs> interesting music. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I really need to learn how to do that in, in, in Twitch. It will be... So it it's be now awesome. installing the dependency and it's the correct one. Mm -hmm. uh, so once this is installed and it executes main.py, uh, main.py will call that add function that we modified. And that should give us a shell. No pressure here. It's taking a really long time. <laughs> um, while we wait, th th there is people in the chat saying that, um, uh, well, that he, w he wasn't going to be able to solve this machine. How, how hard do you think this is? If you are familiar with uh, CI/CD hacking, and if you are not familiar with CI/CD hacking, well, you you got the cell. Yeah, uh, we can talk about that. Uh, so, in this specific scenario, I don't think being familiar with CI/CD was the issue. Uh, I think the the vulnerability I was trying to showcase here is not specific to CI/CD. Mm -hmm. It's dependency confusion. It's a fairly new vulnerability. Uh, it was first talked about last year, 2021. 
uh, there was an awesome blog. Uh, some I don't remember who it was, but they got help from a couple of big bug bounty hackers, and they managed to get shells in like Apple, Amazon, all these big companies, uh, and then they published the write up. And people should have been fixing things, but apparently AWS didn't. So I'm guessing a lot of other people didn't either. Uh, so it's very probable that this is still in the wild. The thing is, it's super hard to test for mm -hmm. because you could be like the way the the person that found this first was doing it uh, was scanning GitHub repositories and uh, applications uh, like Java JavaScript applic applications for names of uh, internal packages and then trying to essentially uh, do the dependency confusion attack. The thing is, there's no way to control how much impact you have. Hmm. Like if you change the dependency and it gets installed and it gets pushed to, pro to production, then you're going to affect production machines. Uh, you don't know what that dependency was doing in the past. So there's no clean way of maintaining the original functionality while you also get like a backdoor access. So you're definitely going to break everything. Yeah, that's that's true. That's a problem. Yeah. So once we did get a shell here, uh, probably need to make this bigger too. Yeah. Probably. That's not going to be an easy, easy task. Oh, I found the shortcut. Nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, if we do an LS, I believe the flag is right here. No. So it will be in. My flags yeah. are always either in the directory where you land or in the root directory. I don't think hiding the flag in the box makes any sense. So we can now cut the flag. Awesome. And that's the flag. So yeah, this was DC. Uh, it was solved by 19 teams. So uh, that's wow. quite a, a big number of, of solves for a hard challenge. Um, I wouldn't say it's that hard. 